So we're coming back to your story. Tell us, what, um, how did this come about? So I watched the show and I decided that I would self-publish my book. And I realized I could use the book as a resource to raise money for the kids. And how did you realize how to even self-publish? How did this come to you? <sighs> I did a lot of research on the internet. I found authors like Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield. I started finding out what was the easiest and quickest way to do it. And it wasn't that difficult. It was interesting because Mark eventually became a mentor of mine. Um, I met him through a weird series of coincidences, which I won't go into now. But the book came to life, and for seven years I have been selling that book one book at a time. The project expanded, so we counted our immediate family members, 89 kids on my husband's side and on mine. In the last seven years, we decided to put them all in one little primary school in my husband's home village. And we've now taken over the whole school, so we, we are looking after 360 kids. And it has been magical working with these kids. What it's done for me is this. I keep imagining that the scientist who will find a cure for AIDS could be in one of these kids. The future Nelson Mandela is in one of the children, and all we need to do right now is give them an opportunity just to be little children, get them to go to school, and my mission is really to make sure that they get to university. So my vision has expanded beyond what I've done in my village. I have decided not to start an orphanage. We've gone back to the traditional way that we used to look after orphans. Orphanages are not working in Africa. Why and not? In particular in Zimbabwe because of corruption. There's a lot of corruption within our government system. You end up finding that the money that is going towards some of these projects does not reach the children. So what we've done is we've gone back to the traditional way of looking after orphans. We have appealed to family members to take the children in. So I grew up in a house full of children. If somebody died and a child needed a home, my mom would take them in. But because of the numbers, you get sometimes families of five, six, eight kids who've lost both parents. One person can't afford to take them in, and they end up getting split up amongst different relatives. The sad thing is they end up working as domestic servants in those homes. They don't get to go to school. So this way, I am actually forcing people to send those kids to school. I pay for the school fees, I pay for medication, for clothing, for food. And it's working like magic because grandparents will take the kids in, and uncle, and aunt, and that's how we're going to have to deal with the children. But what the project has done is this, is it's turned into a, a grassroots level program, which is empowering the whole community. So what we've done is sometimes somebody will take six children in and they need an extra bedroom for them. But instead of going to get a contractor to come in and build that room, we are training the community how to do it. So we've started a microloan program where you can come and get a 50 US dollar microloan. With 50 US dollars, you can buy five bags of cement, you can make a thousand bricks, and we will pay you $250 for your effort. But you pay back the microloan so we don't run out of funds and we can lend it to somebody else. But what it's done is this, it is giving people pride in who they are, it's giving people skills, it's giving people a hand out of poverty and not a hand out. A lot of organizations come to Africa but they're very ineffective in how they operate because when you're given something for free it means that you're going to last a day or maybe a month. But when you're taught how to help yourself, there's no limit as to how much you can create. And that's what really excites me about the project. So you're, you're building this beautiful legacy. How can people get a hold of you and help? My website, I'm on Facebook. The website is africaliveonline.com. On Facebook, I have started a group called The Tribe. In Africa, we believe that it takes a village to bring up a child. And I found that using social media could help me reach people around the world who could be enrolled in this course. So it's a movement. If anybody wants to join the tribe, look for me on Facebook. It's called the Tribe Ambassadors for Africa Alive. And it's a group of people from all over the world who are brainstorming, sharing ideas that can help us move the project forward. The other thing you can do is come on a trip to Zimbabwe with me. I am taking groups of tourists. I realize that with the recession, it's really hard to fundraise right now, so I've turned it into a business. It's a 15-day trip. 
we spend 10 days working in our village with no electricity, no running water. It's worse than fear factor, but great in terms of the response that you get and the results you'll get from that stay. Then we end the trip with five days in the Victoria Falls on a safari. So there's many ways that people can contribute. The main way that I'm raising money for school fees is I have a campaign called One Cup of Coffee. And I'm asking people worldwide to give up one cup of coffee a month because five US dollars will educate a child for three months. Three months of education, which is one school term, is five US dollars. So become a subscriber as well for as little as five dollars and you can help me make a difference. So lovely. Please mention the uh, website again. The so, easiest way to contact you. <laughs> the website is africaaliveonline.com or Facebook. Get Rude Mache on Facebook. Thank you so much, Gitrud, for being with us today. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much.